Hi, and welcome back to uh, how to write a platformer game in Java. Uh, in this video, we'll talk about how to make our game very early on object oriented. So, let me show you what we did last time. Um, so, in the last uh, video, we talked about uh, creating uh, an image variable and then creating a. Actually, I modified this slightly from the last video, but adding in variables that represent the cent position of the image and then maybe. I can add variables that represent the velocity in the x direction and also in the y direction of the object. And then we in, uh, in setup we initialize the variable by loading the image and then initialize the rest of the position and also maybe uh, the velocity of the object. Uh, and then in draw we uh, draw the image and then we update the position of the of the object. And so as we loop through this, uh, our image is going to be drawn continuously and each time it'll be moved slightly um, to a new position and so that's how we create that animation effect. So if I were to run this um, it's gonna be moving at a diagonal position. Oh by the way I wanna clarify that uh, processing, the origin of processing 0, 0 is actually on the top left corner of the screen. Positive x is goes uh, to, the, to the right so that's the width and so x direction positive is this way and then y direction, the positive y direction actually points down. So this is uh, slightly inverted. So that's why when I um, uh, the the velocity in the y direction being positive actually makes it move down rather than up. So that's one thing I want to just point out uh, early on here. Okay, so now in the last video we talked about how this is actually not really um, good in the sense that our variables, right, we have a bunch of variables here that represent an, our, our, our character and then and then we have also a um, function that um, methods that change, or really uh, code that change the, those variables. So these uh, this should be like a, some kind of a method or something. And so so we have variables kind of a method separately. So in object oriented programming, we want to combine our data, our variables, and our behaviors, our methods, and put them into one. And we call that a class. Uh, and then we can create multiple objects of that class. So for example, if I were to create another uh, another character, I would, have to I would have to make this center x1, center y1, and this would be 1. And I have to copy and paste that, and then make the next one be uh, 2. I would copy. So this is, you see how this is not efficient. We don't make this, um, so I, I don't want to keep doing this and changing the, the index to, rep to represent different objects. What I want to do is that put all this into a class, a template, and then from from that template we can create many objects without having to uh, rename our variables. Um, and so that's what we want to do next. We want to make this object oriented by creating a class. So I create, I click on this arrow and I create a new tab, and I'll call this class the sprite class. The sprite to represent a sprite on the screen. And so this is a so here's the the sprite class. And I want to have these variables, all these variables actually, uh, be in, in the sprite class. So there'll be an image. Um, I'll take out the indices. There's a, a center x, center y. Change x, change y for the velocity. And we also will have a variable for uh, the width and also the height of the, of the sprite. Okay, so. Um, let's just write this class. So we need constructors. So here's the public sprite, and this first constructor will be very simple. Uh, well, it'll take um, we need a, a the name, the file name of the uh, the image, maybe a um, a, a scale, so that uh, if I ha I can scale the image up and down, and maybe I'll have a, a position like uh, the x and y position of the sprite. So this is could be my my um, constructor so let's initialize the so again the point of the constructor is that we want to um, initialize these variables so um, how do I initialize the image well IMG is load image as we saw earlier and so uh, in this case it would be data and then um, the name is uh, well actually sorry uh, it should be find name because uh, the name of the file is, is given here, so I'm going to load the image and I'll uh, initialize the center x to be x, center y to be y, 
change x I can make it 0 change y also 0 uh, and then um, actually I'm gonna I want to initialize the width and the height of the uh, of the sprite and so let's put it here um, so it turns out that um, I can take a, an image a p image uh, object and I can access the width the dimension of the actual original native resolution of the image and then I can multiply that by the scale factor so for example if my scaling is a half then now the, the, the sprite will have, will have dimension half of the original uh, image then the height would be image dot height and then I multiply that by the scaling factor so this will initialize uh, all my instant variables so that's my first constructor and maybe I'll add another constructor maybe this one uh, take uh, a file name but maybe it doesn't have so many variables. Maybe have only two variables. Maybe a scale, but maybe no no uh, position. So if that's the case. Uh, one trick we can do is that we can use the this uh, to call the constructor to call this constructor. And so I can send. I can call this constructor by sending over the file name, uh, the scale, and then I need to send over x and y. I'll just make that at the origin. So, so then uh, the, this constructor is actually very easy. Yeah, so there it is. We have two constructors that can help initialize uh, our um, our object, our sprite uh, object. Okay. So now, um, now if I want to create my uh, my object, I can say sprite, say p. So that's declaring the the sprite object, and then here instead of doing all this, we can replace it with uh, p is equal to new sprite I need uh, I can call either of these so for example I can call the uh, this this first one and I can send over the file name so here's where we put the file name data uh, tank dot png um, and then I also will need the scaling so maybe I put 1.0 just the original scaling and then I'll put it at 100 X and then 300 Y and by the way, again, you don't uh, processing actually as long as my image is in the data file, the data folder, at least, um, then I actually don't need to reference the the data directory. So I can actually take this out, and this will still work. Uh, so it's up to you how you want to do that. Okay, so let me uh, leave that there. And so now I just created a sprite object. And now let's just uh, now think about how to do this. Now these are changing the ver the so for example this is changing the the data of the object. So we can put that into a method. So let's create a method. Create two methods actually. Maybe well, this is drawing the the image or displaying the image. And this is uh, updating the image. So let's create uh, two methods to uh, uh, mutate a method. Really well. Let's try that. Let's try this one. So let's do display. This will be an accessor method. Just gonna display our image, and and so we should say image. The, the image uh, method will display an image, and the name of this image is img. So I put img here. Actually, you know what? I want to I want to say image actually just to keep it. Um, and so, so that's the image, and I need a position. So center x, center y. So that's the display method will display my image, and I also. And this right here is updating our position, so I'm gonna call this um, mutated method uh, update, and all it does is that it's gonna update my. So I take the center x, and it's gonna add to it the change x, and then it's gonna take the center y and add to it the change y. So this will move my um, my sprite. So there it is. This is a simple uh, class, the sprite class. And now I can go back here and change it so that now it's, it'll be object oriented. Instead, it'll be uh, p dot. I want to display the image, so here's displaying p, the player p, and then I also need to update my position. So notice how because uh, we have code here in our template class, uh, over in the, the driver class, our code is a little bit simpler because all the details has been abstracted away over in the, the class. So now. I, I declare the sprite, I initialize it in setup, I display it, and I update it. I want to go back, 
uh, clear the screen, display it again at a new position, update it again. So this is where. So now if I run this, um, okay. So low image file name. I have a an error here. Oh, this is now. It should be image. I forgot to change it. Um, so. So let's go back and run that. And then this is the exact same program. Um, except that if I want to move it, then I just say p dot change x is five, for example. Then this will give it a velocity, um, and and then that will move it. So display and then update. Now I want to say one thing. Uh, so for processing, because it's meant to be for visual artists. And sometimes non programmers, so um, so it does kind of drop some conventions in Java, for example. Uh, encapsulation says that we should technically make these uh, private variables, right? Uh, but uh, so you can do it, you can also make this private, but in processing the conventions to kind of make it simple by just making everything public. And so we're, we're going to just simplify uh, things and keep that convention in processing by just making these things uh, public. Um, Okay, so so this is uh, making our uh, our character or our sprite uh, now uh, a class. Okay, all right. Thanks for watching.